All right, gang, here we are back with the uh, videos for the 2018 CrossFit Open. Um, 18.1 has brought us a, a nice little triplet, 20 minutes long, of toes to bar or knee ups. Uh, the new movement, dumbbell hang power clean um, to overhead. And then calories on the rower, 14 for the guys, 12 for the ladies. We're gonna do something a little bit different this year. Uh, rather than me give very in-depth uh, specific strategies, um, I'm just going to give some overarching principles, hopefully that will allow you guys to come up with the strategy that works best for you. But as always, if you have questions, just post them to the comments and we'll get right back to you. Um, so first thing we want to go over is just general warm-up procedures. So we break this down into three specific parts here at our gym. Um, GDS, G stands for general, D stands for dynamic, and S for specific. Um, and they each have their own goals. The goal of the general warm-up is uh, spending five to seven minutes on three different implements. So you can think row, um, bike, and run, or row, bike, ski, if you have a ski erg, something like that. Uh, but something very low intensity, aerobic in nature, that's cyclical in nature as well. So the goal is to just get blood flow to the extremities, raise your core temperature, raise your breathing rate, um, and then, especially for this one, make sure that you are getting good blood flow to uh, your forearms because this is definitely a grip intensive workout. Uh, for the dynamic part of the warm up, we're talking about 7 to 10 movements here where you are taking your uh, major joints of your body through a full range of motion. So, obviously, you're looking at uh, shoulders, um, you are looking at your thoracic spine, hip joint just a little bit, knees, ankles, whenever you get to the rower but spend some time just working your joints through a full range of motion. For the specific warm-up, what we're gonna recommend here is to do rounds of the workout. So if you're looking at toes to bar, you're gonna do you know, a round of toes to bar, dumbbell hang clean and jerk, and row, uh, three rounds through that, not at your workout pace, uh, but I want you to do it at a moderate pace, so think 80 to 85% of what your planned pace is get off and kind of take an internal inventory of how do you feel. Um, is this a maintainable pace? So if you were to continue on all the way through 20 full minutes, would you able, be able to maintain that pace? Uh, if the answer is yes, then I would recommend you stick with that pace, even though we said it's slightly dialed back, knowing that on the back half of the workout, maybe you can push a little bit harder, all right? Um, if you say no, that that is definitely not a maintainable pace, then we're going to recommend that you back it down a little bit. Um, okay, so talking about the specifics of the movements here, uh, toes to bar. If you don't think that you can go unbroken the whole way, quick singles are a very, very good option um, if you're not going to do something like a four and four. Um, we saw a, a ton of athletes go through it so far at our gym and quick singles uh, were very, very well done. They worked great. If you're going knee ups, there's no other option. Do them unbroken. There's no reason to break on those. It's only eight. You're hanging onto the bar for maybe 10 seconds, so just deal with it. Maybe you reverse your grip um, just to save it a little bit there. The dumbbell hang clean and jerk, unbroken. So five, switch hands without setting it down. Do another five with the other side and just get those done. Make sure that you feel nice and smooth and that you're breathing through them, but you don't, you shouldn't have to break those up if you're doing them with good form and good technique. One caveat to that, if you are pushing the bounds of the weight for meeting the RX standard, so we saw this with some of our female athletes so far, 35 was kind of on the sketchy side for them, this is where I would recommend breaking them. So maybe you do three with one arm, rest, do the other two, and then same thing on the other side, three, rest, two, Split jerk is a very, very good option for getting the weight overhead. Just make sure that you bring those feet back together, have everything locked out to meet the standard of a good rep. All right, and then on the rower, this is probably my biggest piece of advice because I do think that this workout can be lost on the rower. So you need to know your pace. So I call it my depth's door pace, is that no matter what, no matter how bad I feel, I know what I can maintain from a calories per hour pace on the rower and you need to do some homework to figure that out. If it's 900 calories an hour, then that is the minimum that you need to see on that screen no matter how you are feeling in this workout. If it's 600, great, then make sure that you can maintain 600. But knowing your pace on the rower is the way to get 
um, your potential out of this thing. Uh, second to last is just brief kind of thoughts on pace plan. If you watched uh, the two top athletes, Holta and Briggs, go last night, you saw Sam Briggs get um, in, into round number 13, almost finish. And this is ideas of how quick your rounds need to be if you're bumping up against that. So if you're going for eight rounds, that's about 2.30 per round. If you're wanting to get 10 rounds, that's about two minutes per round. And 11 minutes is, or excuse me, 11 rounds is about a minute 47 per round. So again, you can take that knowledge. If you're thinking nine rounds is your goal, do three rounds during your specific warm-up at that pace, get off, ask yourself, how do you feel? And then know, okay, well maybe nine's not the number for me. Maybe I need to back it down a little bit and go to this 2.30 pace, okay? And then lastly, I just want to give you guys some closing thoughts on easy wins for you on this. Number one, lifestyle choices. This is the easiest way to make sure that um, you get the most of your physical potential out of these workouts. And this is going to be the same for all five weeks. Lifestyle choices, sleep, hydration, and nutrition, all right? Make sure you're getting eight to 10 hours of sleep before you do this workout. Make sure that you are drinking plenty of water within the 24 to 48 hours before you do the workout. And then make sure that you are eating accordingly. One big note about nutrition, don't do anything different than what you would normally do. So don't start taking a new supplement. Don't try a brand new restaurant. Don't go for the Thai hot or anything like that. Uh, keep it normal to what you would eat standard throughout the week so that your body knows what to expect when you ask for maximal performance that next day. Uh, number two is preparation, which is everything that we just went over here. These are the things that you can control. You can't control what the movements and the workout is, but you can control how you warm up. You can control how you decide to break the workout up. You can control your pace. So take the time uh, to be diligent about that stuff. And then lastly, this is pretty much an easy one and a no-brainer, but the one that a lot of people forget about is your equipment setup. So in an ideal situation, it would be like one and a half step or less in between your rower, your bar for the toes to bar or knee-ups, and then your dumbbell. You don't want to have to walk 12 steps to get to the dumbbell every time. Set your station up so everything is right there. If you need your chalk bucket or you need a fan or something nearby, have everything right there for you. Um, again, 20 minutes to make sure that you don't go out like a uh, bat out of hell because it is a long one and you don't want to just sit there and suffer for 17 minutes after you blew through the first round. If you got any questions, let us know and uh, good luck.